Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to do a video today regarding the uh, cool feature on the Synology NES known as Quick Connect and just doing a little bit of looking into how exactly this works. Um, Synology NESs are fantastic tools, really, really useful if you uh, particularly are doing videography work and you are generating gigabytes of data uh, every day or every week and you need somewhere to store that stuff. The first thing I typically do when I finish a video, even one of these little sort of webcasts for YouTube, is I want to back up that video file and then put it somewhere on the network or out of my local environment. Now for proper backup, you wanna do one typically on-site backup and one off-site backup. So you can put it on your NAS, but you also then need to go ahead ideally and get that over to uh, the cloud or uh, someone else's uh, computer for that matter. It just needs to be geographically separated from your home network environment. Now, um, typically when I would be traveling and making videos, which I've only been doing for the last couple of years, but I would bring along a external SSD. And if I finished a video project, I'd put that on my SSD. And then when I got back home, I would uh, get that SSD, external SSD, a Seagate, whatever, and I would put that onto my NES and then delete the files on the external SSD and rinse and repeat. And that's probably what most people uh, do in fact, but there is an actually simpler way if you already own a Synology NES. Buried a little bit into the menu of the Synology NES under advanced settings, external access, you'll see a little thing called external access. And what this, what this is, is quick connect. Quick Connect is a way to access your Synology NES from outside of your local network, right? Typically, when you're connecting to your Synology, you're on your LAN and uh, it's all wired up over Ethernet cable and it's very easy to do. What happens when you are beyond the local network? So those of us who have uh, done such cool and geeky things as running our own web servers from our homes or uh, I believe my first job it was running a CRM from an old laptop in the office at one point, you know that in order to get local infrastructure accessible from outside of a home network or an office network, you typically need to set up port forwarding on the router in order to uh, allow that port to be connectable from outside the network, outside the LAN on the WAN, the wide area network. Now, if you don't do that, there's there are some workarounds that I've seen over the years. And they typically require something called proxying or some sort of proxying system. So I used the uh, Quick Connect recently in the US and I was amazed and delighted with how well it worked. I would finish a video and I could log in via Synology Quick Connect and I could upload to my NES just as if I was in my house. Now the thing that made me a bit suspicious of how it worked or I suspected it was a proxy server was because of the speeds, it was a slower process. So I suspected that when I was uploading to my NAS via Quick Connect, there was a proxy server between, in other words, I was actually uploading from let's say a hotel room to the proxy server. Then the proxy server was passing that file on to my NAS and if I wanted to grab something off my NAS, the reverse process, upload from my local environment, sorry, upload from my NAS, to the proxy server, from the proxy server, download to where I actually wanted to access the file. So that was my suspicion, but I couldn't be sure. So I plugged into Google how Quick Connect works and I came across this interesting resource. This is the official, now there's articles and I didn't want to just kind of plagiarize someone else's writing. So instead I decided to plagiarize Synology, right? That's, uh, that's legit. Um, so Synology have a white paper and more, more seriously, I uh, went to went for this resource because uh, it's actually authored by the manufacturer. Now, the cool thing was about uh, Quick Connect, you don't need a, you don't need port forwarding. It's really, really works out of the box. So how does this work exactly? So this white paper spells it out basically and they get to the juicy part uh, right about here. Quick Connect hole punching. I'm gonna read you the, uh, the the lovely words of the Synology documentation here. If no direct connection can be established, right? So if you don't have port forwarding set up on your uh, on your network, therefore there's no way to directly connect from your NES box at home to your ho to your hotel room in Rome or Bodega or uh, Seattle, Washington. If no direct connection can be established, the client will attempt to establish a virtual tunnel between the client and the NAS via Quick Connect to allow a temporary direct link for data transmission. 
This technology allows the server and the client to experience internet synchronization performance very similar to connection via WAN, IP, slash DDNS without physically having such an environment. Hole punching works by initiating a virtual tunnel from the client to the NES with the aid of the Quick Connect server. Sounds very much like a proxy server. So here's how it works. One, the NES sends out a request to the Quick Connect server and keeps the hole. A random external port punched by the request on the NAT in front of the NAS open to receive a hole punching request. Similarly, the client sends out a request to the Quick Connect server to create another hole on the NAT in front of the client. Okay, so both sides are using hole punching. You, let's stop talking about client servers, you trying to access your NAS on the NAS on your network, two hole punchings going, hole punchings going on. Three, the Quick Connect server will deliver the whole information of the NAS to the client and vice versa. So you tell each other how to get into one another's networks. The NAS will try to establish a connection to the client through the punch hole on the client side. Once the client receives the hole punching request from the NAS, a hole punching response is sent back to the NAS via the punched hole on the NAS side and we have a nice little diagram to make this easy so there is indeed a quick connect server but it's not really a punching server it's actually more passing on uh workarounds to the local network environments on both sides hole punching handshake virtual tunnel um and that is the figure one here quick connect hole punching uh mechanism once the virtual tunnel i'm gonna put myself a little bit smaller here once the quick con once the virtual tunnel is successfully established Remote client can use this connection to communicate with the NAS directly and no network relay is needed. In case where the virtual tunnel cannot be created, a relay service is available for data transmission. When traffic is relayed, it goes through a Synology relay server before arriving at its destination, requiring more time compared to direct connections or quick connect hole bunching. Requ so I'm gonna read that again. Requiring more time compared to direct connections or quick connect hole punching. So this is a slower, data transmission process. The Quick Connect Relay Service serves as the final option for data to be communicated between the NAS and the client. So they've got kind of various ways um, to do it. Now, um, I believe you can probably set up direct connectivity by configuring that port forwarding. I haven't gotten around to doing it yet, uh, but I, I like the fact that they've given you all kinds of options. If the hole punching fails to create a connection, the client will make one last connection attempt by creating a virtual network tunnel using the quick connect relay service which works as follows to initiate the relay service a client will send a request they go into the detail again about how the relay server works it's kind of what you'd expect um it can cause a significant delay in data delivery and is thus the last method a client will take an attempt to reach the server uh and figure two shows that uh relay service working in the middle here i suspect that might have been what i was using when i was accessing the nas from uh outside of my network um and there's more details here uh that we're not going to get into so that is basically how this thing works in other words there is a preferential method there is a hole punching mechanism and if neither direct connection is possible and the hole punching mechanism doesn't work uh it'll transmit data through a relay server now i get that that is super complex as a non-it professional just as a guy who likes all this uh, geekery and hence it's a big focus on my YouTube channel. I get the concepts there, even if the uh, precise details uh, to drill down into exactly how a uh, hole punching handshake is established is uh, knowledge for people on a different pay grade than I am on. So uh, I hope this video has been useful. If you are a Synology user, you've been impressed by Quick Connect and you wondered how it worked. Here are the here were the tech details. Thank you guys for watching. And if you'd like to get more uh, videos from me, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And of course, have a great day.